You know, the tennis serve, it's one of the most explosive, elegant, and frankly, violent movements in all of sports. It's literally a symphony of physics and biology, and today we're going to break it all down piece by piece from the ground up. So let's just start with this one number, 263 kilometers per hour. That is the world record for the fastest tennis serve. I mean, think about that for a second. That is faster than a high-speed train, a blistering, almost unbelievable speed generated by a human being. And that speed brings us to the central question, right? How is that even humanly possible? And let me tell you, it's not just about having a super strong arm. Oh, no. It's about a perfectly timed sequence of events that turns the human body into, well, a weapon. So let's dive in and uncover the secrets. All right. So to figure this out, our journey is going to begin in a place you probably wouldn't expect. This is part one, power from the ground up. Because, and this is the key, all that incredible velocity, it doesn't actually start in the arm. Nope. The real secret to a 200 plus kilometer per hour serve begins with the player's feet, literally pushing against the ground. You have to think of the body as this single integrated system designed to build and channel energy, and it all kicks off with that initial push. Okay, so the core scientific idea here is something called the kinetic chain. And honestly, the easiest way to wrap your head around it is to just picture cracking a whip, right? The energy starts in the handle, that's your legs, and it flows through the whole whip, getting faster and faster until, bam, that explosive crack at the very tip. And in this case, the tip of the whip is the racket. And this process shows that upward flow of energy perfectly. First, players bend their knees. They're loading up all that power and then they just explode upwards. That energy shoots up to the hips, which snap open, kicking off the rotation. From there, the torso twists, kind of like you're coiling a giant spring, and then finally, whoosh, all of that stored up power is just unleashed through the arm and into the racket. It's literally a wave of power surging up the body. Okay, so that brings us perfectly to our second part, the body's torque engine. Because if you think of the legs as the foundation, then the torso and the shoulders, well, that's the massive engine room. That's where the real rotational power is generated. And this rotational power, it all comes down to a physics concept called torque. Again, just think of your body as a giant spring. As a player prepares to serve, they're coiling their hips and shoulders away from the net, storing up a massive amount of potential energy. Uncoiling that spring is what generates the incredible rotational speed. And this whole process has a really cool name, a summation of speed. The idea is that it's not just one muscle group doing all the work. No way. Each rotating segment, the hips, the trunk, the shoulder, it builds on the speed of the one right before it, amplifying the velocity as it travels up that kinetic chain. And you don't have to take my word for it. The data proves it. I mean, just look at these numbers. The pelvis rotates at a peak speed of around 750 degrees per second. Fast. Then the trunk builds on that reaching 1,100. But then look at the racket. It more than doubles that speed, hitting a totally staggering 2,200 degrees per second. That right there, that's the summation of speed in action. All right, now we get to the main event, the climax of this entire motion, the moment of impact. All of that biomechanical energy we've built up is about to be transferred in one incredibly brief and violent collision. Get this, five milliseconds. That's about how long the tennis ball is actually in contact with the racket strings. To put that into perspective, a single blink of an eye takes about 100 milliseconds. So in this tiny, tiny fraction of a second, that's where all the physics happens. And the transformation the ball goes through is just incredible. Before impact, it's just hanging out at the top of its toss. It has basically zero velocity, almost no kinetic energy. But after that five millisecond collision, Boom, it's traveling over 200 kilometers an hour, it's carrying massive energy, and it has been severely compressed by the force. And that deformation is no joke. The force of the impact is so extreme that the tennis ball can actually compress down to nearly half its original diameter before it rebounds off the strings. It's just an incredible display of energy transfer. But here's a fun fact, that energy transfer isn't perfectly efficient only about 55% of the racket's kinetic energy actually goes into making the ball go fast. So where does the other 45% go? Well, it gets lost as heat, sound, you know, that super satisfying pop, and vibrations in the racket and the player's arm. 
Okay, so let's put all these pieces together in our final section, the biomechanical blueprint. How do all these principles combine to create a truly elite athletic performance? And this is the crucial point to take away. What separates the world's best servers isn't just raw power. It is the flawless, split-second timing and coordination of that entire kinetic chain. Every single movement has to flow perfectly into the next to achieve that maximum velocity. And you can really see the difference here. A professional gets much more knee bend, right? That lets them generate more force from the ground. They also achieve this incredible external shoulder rotation, kind of like a quarterback winding up to throw a deep pass. All this creates a much longer path for the racket to accelerate, letting it build up so much more speed before impact. It's a world away from the shorter, less fluid motion of a typical amateur. So it really all comes down to these four pillars of power. It starts with force coming from the guard. That force is amplified by the sequential rotation of the body. It's then channeled through the arm, which acts like a system of levers, like that whip we talked about. And it's all delivered in a final, efficient transfer of energy at the moment of impact. And that leaves us with a fascinating question for the future. As technology like wearable sensors and AI gets better and better at analyzing every single millisecond of this motion, are we on the verge of discovering the one single biomechanically perfect serve? Or will there always be room for individual style and flair at the very top? Definitely something to think about next time you watch a match.